Hey guys, this is Ben. I'm back um, after a really long break, but I've been playing a ton of chess still. I got I just played in the U.S. National Open under 1900 section. Um, I played up every single game and was able to go three and a half out of seven. So we'll see a little bit of rating gain there, and I was pretty happy with my performance. But today I wanted to show probably my first or second favorite game from the tournament. I lost this one, but I thought it was just so instructive, and I just learned so much from it personally. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Oh, and one quick thing. I haven't looked at any of these guys with the computer yet. Um, I wanted to go through the games without any computer analysis or help, and and then after we go through them and I give you my thoughts, I'll maybe go for the chess.com review and see if my thoughts are correct, see if the computer finds new ideas for me. But yeah, let's just get to it. Um, so, and this is also from um, my opponent's perspective because he just crushed me this game. His name's um, Gavin Gypto. He's 12 years old, half my age, and he was just a monster, and he totally outplayed me. So, let's see how he did it. E4, C5. I'm a Knight Orf player. Ooh, that crown is going to be really annoying. Let me turn that off. Okay. Knight F3, D6, D4. We're getting an open Sicilian. I really should work on my openings more because I just get crushed straight out the opening because I don't know my stuff. Um, knight c3. This is all very standard knight dwarf stuff. And he goes for the English attack. And I actually love to see this because I play knight g4. And I think it's a Gary Kasparov line. But um, it's called the anti-English variation. Really nice. Um, it's good for online. Gets the white players out of their prep fast. But typically the move is bishop back to c1. And that's what I'm pretty used to. And then you can come back for a draw maybe or develop another piece. Bishop d2 is a mistake to queen b6, hitting this knight and the pawn. But um, he goes for a super aggressive line, which I was just not ready for in the slightest. Um, he just gives me the bishop straight up. Oh, also bishop g5 is an option. And then Gary plays like h6, bishop h4, and g5. But that didn't happen. He just gives me the bishop pair and a structural and a long-term structural advantage. So let's see. So he, Gavin's basically playing for an all-out attack here, and it goes well for him. So I grab, I get greedy, and I take it. And as you could see, it's a very imbalanced position now. White has three pieces out, and these central doubled pawns where I have a nice long-term structure in the bishop pair, but I have zero pieces out. And castles is coming, queen, F, queen h5 is coming, queen f3 is coming. It's, it's going to be a tough one. And I did lie a little bit. I was just so curious about this game. I had to see what the best defense was. So I played e6, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. The best defense here is actually a quick knight sprint. The, notice how the king has almost zero defenders of the light squares over here. And castles is coming. All the stuff I previously said is coming. So best is actually to just sprint this knight all the way down to e5, actually. Although f6 looks fine, too. But, yeah, look at this hero knight here. We move a knight twice in the opening, but this knight is somehow fending off almost five pieces at this point. I mean, he's not really fending off the knights, but this knight is doing so good right here. Blockading the pa these pawns, holding f7. So this is how I should have played it, but it's not instructive if I played it right, right? So let's go back. I went e6, and I go e6 a lot in the Knight Orf. I'm a pretty um, passive, more of a solid player. So 
This is a move I'm pretty used to. The idea is you're kind of clamping down on f5 and d5, and you're not letting white's bishop have any fun on this diagonal. But Gavin just ignores me, and he just continues with development. So he castles. He's got a nice threat, or not a threat yet, but you can see the pressure is piling up on f7, right? And so here is where I think I went. This is probably my first biggest inaccuracy. Not sure, of course, because the computer never knows, but I got really scared of queen h5 for some reason. It was. I think if he played queen h5, I could have just gone g3 and maybe feed kettle my bishop, and everything would have been fine. But. I definitely played a bit of a inaccurate move, I, I feel like, in my opinion. We probably needed to get the knight out and to kind of do that maneuver that we already looked at. But um, I was thinking that really the only piece that can help like defend with this is the queen. And I didn't like queen h5, so I went queen g5. And I'm going to call that dubious, to say the least. You know, the queen is the worst defender, as most of us know, so it's just not going to be good. And white here is going to find a ton of great forcing moves. So I was so worried about queen h5, I didn't really put enough respect on queen f3, which is an extremely forcing move. So he plays queen f3, of course. You always want to try and develop with threats, or develop with threats, right? So this is probably the best move. Just eyeing up the weak f7 square. And here I should probably go f6. You know, I had a couple chances to play f6 here and just try my hardest to get him out. Oh, that hangs a pawn, actually. Yeah, I, I can't play f6. So I think my the move I played was about forced. I played queen g6, holding f7. But as you, as you guys will see... I just get rocked from this point onward. Um, Gavin just finds all these amazing like forcing moves, and I just I just get steamrolled. It's crazy. So he plays bishop to d3, and I thought this was a super awesome move. You're threatening to play e5 and force my queen from the defense of um, f7. So it's a huge threat, right? And I think this was my chance to play f6. Here, I could play f6. The pawn is not attacked twice anymore, so f6 is possible. And I'm not weakening my light squares. You're going to see I weaken my light squares, and Gavin just takes it home from there. It's on, it was so instructive. So obviously the move some of you guys have thought about to stop White's e5 idea is to play e5 ourselves, right? And there's And it comes with tempo, right? Like, it visually looks okay, but logically and practically, it is a very horrible move. Um, for one, we've already moved the e-pawn. We've played e6, so we've wasted a tempo on e6. If we were going to play e5, we should have probably just played it from the start. And secondly, these light squares. d5 is now a massive problem. f5 is a massive problem. But his knights hit, right? He should move it? Nah, he doesn't need to. Bishop back to c4. There's not enough time to take the knight, because he's threatening to win our queen. And so now basically f6 is forced, but the problem with f6 now is my light squares are so weak. I could have played, like, f6 would have been okay-ish before, because I still had my pawn on e6, guarding the light squares. But now my position is just Swiss cheese on the light squares. So many holes... Even though I have this great like dark squared structure, it doesn't matter because he's just going to play on the light squares and destroy me. Alright, so I go f6. He saves his knight, knight to f5. I thought knight e6 was an option too, but knight f5 was probably better. Knight f5. And here I thought for a pretty long time. I, I see that the... D6 is very weak. It's a backward pawn. Moves like rook AD1 are coming, just completely winning the pawn. Also notice after E6, the bishop on C4 is so much stronger now. I can't castle kingside, and the bishop is just controlling all the squares in my territory. 
Very bad stuff. So I think I... I'm not sure if this is the best, but I thought this was an okay-ish idea. One of my friends, who's a little stronger than me, didn't really like this because he wanted to castle queenside eventually. But, um... I go for this, and with the idea of going for a rook lift, b5 and rook a7. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm in time to, like, swing a rook over to the defense, but... It's a bit much. Gavin just takes it home, really. So he goes rook a d8 as planned. I bring my rook into defend. And here I thought he had just almost a knockout punch already. But this might be more of a butcher's move, as, as some would say. He could just straight up win a pawn right now by skewering my bishop from the rook. He could go bishop e6, let's say rook d8. And then... um. Bishop takes c8 and knight takes f6, diverting the, the rook from protection of d6. But um, he, he just plays a very mature move and just brings his knight into d5. Why win a pawn when you could just checkmate your opponent in the next, like, seven moves, right? I mean, just look at this. These knights are comfortably placed on these beautiful light-squared outposts. The bishop has insane x-ray control over my position. And as you'll see soon, he gets his queen into the light squares too, and that is just damning. So I think I have a chance to breathe, and I play bishop b7, maybe putting some pressure on this knight, but I think this is also another huge mistake, because I'm giving up protection of this diagonal. And this is actually the diagonal that kills me in the game, and I think I needed to have a little more foresight of white's plans here. I... I thought I could hold, but jeez, I really couldn't. So, bishop e7. He goes rook f7. Just slowly improving his pieces. Maybe he's going to bring his rook over to d2. But, um, there's not much hope for me. So, I go knight c6. I'm desperately, desperately trying to develop. I've already given up on castling this game. Internally, my internal monologue here is like, oh man, this sucks. I have this beautiful looking structure, but... It's only beautiful looking. It's not actually good because the light squares are so weak, right? So I go knight c6, and he just wins the game from here, basically. He goes knight b6, a pretty nice move. I either have to give up the pawn or get checkmated. So I didn't see the checkmate yet, but so I pretty much put myself in a mating net. I go rook d8 here, and maybe rook c7 was better just to avoid trapping my queen king so much. But look at this. Notice um, the squares around my king. d7 controlled by his knight. f7 controlled by his bishop. And e7 controlled by his knight. And my king is sandwiched between two black pieces. So I have already fallen into a mating net almost, and we'll see how he does it. So after rook d8, he finds a brilliant idea, in my opinion. I mean, my some of my friends saw this pretty quick, but I, I was pretty astounded by it when I saw it. He goes on um, knight h4, and I thought that was an awesome idea. Um, where's the brilliant? There we go. Yeah, so the idea is that we're just getting our only light squared de defender, essentially. The only light squared defender in the area is this queen, right? Because I already moved my bishop off this important diagonal, and it's not defending any of the important light squares. So he finds knight h4. I'm forced to put my queen on a dark square, either h6 or h5, or b g5. So I go g5. I guess it looks a little more natural. I don't think there's much difference. It's already... I'm surely already lost here. I'm excited to see the computer's evaluation of this whole game. But um, queen g5. And then a move that I missed, but hopefully I'll never miss again because it was pretty awesome to see. Just queen h3. And look at this. This is light square domination at its finest. Finest, Like, you know, I have a couple national master friends. I have a lot of strong player friends. And they, st they say stuff like, oh, like... White's just going to play in the light squares for an attack and win the game, and, you know, you hear that, and you're like, okay, but you don't really know how 
that happens, right? And I think this is a perfect example of how you attack on a color complex and just win the game. So white here is already threatening um, checkmate, basically. There's a few ideas. Forgetting most of them, but like queen e6 here, and then there's Meta on f7 because the knight nicely defends the square. So I need to somehow guard f7, and I do. I think I might have missed a defense here. My friend saw that I had queen h5, going back to the light squares and defending f7. But you know, it's the last round. I was really tired. I had gotten some all-you-could-eat sushi and was way too full with my friend. And I guess, I think I missed this defense. Maybe the computer will refute it somehow. But either way, I just hang the mate, basically. Because there's nothing better. If if this defense works, like, maybe I can hold on a couple more moves. But this, I, I think I played, like, the second best, at least. I went bishop e7 with the idea of sliding my rook in to defend f7. Um, but I think I'm just busted here. Queen e6, of course. Threatening mate on f7. Got to go rook f8, forced. And just look at this. Look at this fortress of solitude. All my pieces are on dark squares. But all of his pieces are attacking the light squares. So, this is just atrocious for black. I've misplayed this horribly. The light squares are just too weak and he's come in. So, how does Gavin bring it home? He nicely brings his knight back to f5. Threatening checkmate ideas on e7, potentially. This is going to come. So, I encourage you to try and find a move for black here. Because I don't think there's a single move for black here. If this rook moves, I get mated in one. If this rook moves, I get mated in one. On this square. Um, the bishop could come back and he could just win a piece. So, that's not really a good option. Maybe I could go bishop a8, just waiting. But I essentially played another waiting move too. Waiting to die. Um, if the queen tries to defend the light squares, checkmate right here. There's just a million checkmates everywhere. There's just nothing to do. So I went h5 because there's there's just nothing in play for black. I'm in Zugschwang with almost every piece on the board still. Zwischenzug. Sorry, I say it wrong. <laughs> but um, h5... Gavin nicely sacrifices, well, pseudo-sacrifices his rook on d6. I mean, he's going to recapture, so, because the bishop's pinned. If I capture here, he has knight takes with check, and then mate on this square. So knight check, king is forced here, and then kiss of death, queen checkmate on d7 with help of the knight. So I play a desperation move. I see this. And I take on f5. Like, in, in a parallel universe, like, there's, like, one way to make a mistake in this line, I'm pretty sure. But obviously he doesn't find it. Like, um, I believe the line would be rook d8, knight d8, and he just has to take with his queen here. Because if he goes in for the checkmate too fast, I mean, my queen can capture. But he just plays this and I resign. Because I'm just down seven points material and my light squares are still weak and mate's still coming, I think. Yeah, maybe I could play bishop c6 to defend the mate for like a second more, but you know, I didn't want to show too much disrespect to the youngster. I was like really satisfied with the game. I was smiling the whole time. Because I just knew I was getting outplayed to the fullest. But let's take a quick look at the computer's evaluation. Let's see how. Let's see what the computer thinks. Okay. I'm excited to see its thoughts. I'm guessing I had 50% accuracy. 55 maybe. 60. Gavin probably had at least 90. 95. Oh, wow, only 86, but let's, oh, wow, look at this graph, guys. This is pretty cool. Let, I wonder which move is this killer. I bet it's E5. I want it to be E5, because I think that was the killing move. 
Okay. Look, and yes, I mean, bishop c4 is an inaccuracy, but you really need to know this knight d7 idea. Oh, well, computer saying e6 is best, but I don't trust it. I like this knight maneuver more, personally. Castling is an only move, and queen g6, definitely an inaccuracy. Queen g5. Wow. Queen f3, not even best, but it felt overwhelming. Yeah, computer is still giving me minus 0.2 here. Wow. But let's see. Yes! It's e5. Yeah, look at that. An amazing, amazing swing in evaluation. I go for minus 0.6 to down point three or down plus three for him like this move doesn't hang a piece but it hangs a massive attack on the light squares and wow I'm, I'm so impressed with this kid it's so awesome that he found this but so I was able to learn so much from this Bishop c4 is I guess brilliant I mean it's pretty obvious I was I was expecting him to play this but yeah, let's see what um the best move was instead of e6. Let's retry. How was... Oh, wrong move. Let's retry here. How's f6? Wow, the computer's slow today. Sheesh, okay. You know what? Let's just ask it what the best move is. Gavin played like a 2150. Okay. Oh, 97 was best? Oh, it, it said that already. I'm so stupid. But, yeah, it's okay. Alright, Bishop... Oh, and now it's saying F6 is best? Okay, I'm confused. Knight F5... Yeah, knight c6 makes more sense. I thought about, like, knight c6 to e7 with the idea of kind of trying to, like, swap the knights off and get rid of some of the pressure on my position, but I thought it was too slow, personally. I mean, the position's still plus three, so it's not like there's much I can do here. Rook a7, at least after my idea, it's right. Wow. Computer wanted me to just give up the pawn, of course. Makes sense. You really need... We, we need white to trade off some pieces. Yeah, and best move here was just to give up the rook. It's critical that we give some material back just to survive. You know, computer wants to give it up. And then, yeah, this, this is probably a lot of best moves here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just a crushing best move attack. Queen takes f5 was best, at least. I, I'm proud I saw that one. <laughs> Even though it's already too late. Wow. Yeah, what a crushing attack. Even though the computer gave his attack a couple inaccuracies, I mean... You know, he's a 12-year-old, and this is like... We're humans here, right? His, his attack was just monstrously beautiful. Alright. Well, I hope I was able to show a really cool light squared attack. I hope whoever, if you got this far, I hope you got something out of it. Thanks so much for watching. This is Ben. I'll be back with some more um, recap videos of my time at the National Open. Until then, thank you.